Those Days with the Monsters, Part 23 Kirill looked out from the bridge and felt his frills standing up slowly, turning red-black. Captain? he asked slowly, staring at the glimmering sphere in front of him. Yeah, Squishy? Kirill didn't even have the mental energy to protest the nickname. All his focus was on watching the planet that the ship was facing. Isn't this... Ksrunken? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. The captain seemed bizarrely calm for where they were. Could Kirill be mistaken? If you mean the Tizix farm planet you mentioned before, yeah, it is. Kirill's frills grew darker, prickling up along his neck. He'd only been up and around for a few days, and he'd been hoping to be wrong so very, very much. Not that there were many planets with bands of red clouds and a white surface, but still, he'd hoped. Why are we here? He whispered, his mouth feeling dry and dust-covered. Well, we're here to cause a ruckus. The captain bared his teeth, but it seemed less friendly than usual. Bass is one of farm sapiens on our watch? I don't think so. Kirill's head spun. They'd left jump what seemed like a long time ago. How long had they been in Tizik space? After a few attempts, he managed to make his voice work and asked the question aloud. How, how long have we been here? Eh, uh, cause whatever it is, about five days. In Tizik space? Half an hour after we left jump. Sleepy made a small amusement noise behind Kirill. It intensified as Kirill launched himself awkwardly through the air, his already frayed nerves startled by the sound. Sorry, space man. I was just gonna explain. You see, these things like to sneak up on folks in jump, so they clearly have a pretty strong jump presence. Well, how'd you get around there? You go around. But so about a half an hour out we left jump, when conventional the rest of the way. But surely they know we're here. Kirill found himself stammering. The Cumans had recklessly launched themselves headfirst into a no-win situation. There was no way out. Nah, we don't have FDL scanning active right now, so they won't find the hole from emissions. Sleepy was strapping on some kind of face mask. His words sounded slightly muffled through it. Plus, we kitted out the ship. She's got stealth now. Bashful, what's our radar cross-section now? The blue hologram flickered to life. Bashful's soft drawl seemed to calm the entire bridge. Let's see, metric or imperial? Ah, come on, Bashful. Nobody uses imperial in space. Carol's frills, though the main body was either black or very dark red, showed just the faintest tinge of fuchsia at the edges, and he considered asking what this imperial was. The Cumans he knew would never tolerate an Imperial rulership the way the Frey did, so he was at a loss. Metric it is, then. With the current upgrades, our radar cross-section is about 0.5 cubic meters, about the size of a cheap motel minibar. The crew roared with amusement. Oh man, Jones, leave it to your girl to come up with the single worst way for him to picture this. That sounded like Alex. Kirill hoped she wasn't going to end up in trouble with the rest of these insane Cumans. Then again, Sleepy was going too. Maybe Alex could protect Sleepy? Kirill shook his head slightly. His mind was a chaotic mess right now. That's my wife, Hook. And don't you forget it. Alex groaned, strapping her face mask on. How can I? You won't let me. Dopey made a noise of protest, but Alex wasn't done. I know you're still love-struck and mushy, but come on, Jones. Haven't we kept you busy enough with work? Always got time for my wife, how dare you, Hook? Dopey sounded, not as angry as he should have, given his use of how dare you. If anything, amazingly, he only sounded mildly annoyed. All I'm saying is, we're just one single stealth ship. If even one of your moves turns out to be wrong, we're in deep shit. Alex broke off, with a little noise between a grumble and a sigh. Her eyes... What Kirill could see of them behind the thick and coloured glass steel of her mask seemed to be looking right at him. Trouble. In deep trouble. Kirill, at this point, was hopelessly lost. What? What are you doing? What am I doing? You 
I stand on the ship with Dopey and Bashful. We are going down there. The captain's eyes seem to crinkle, as if he had bared his teeth under the mask. Assuming Dopey and Bashful had done their jobs right, this won't be a Tizix planet when we're done. Carol's frills darkened even further, if that were possible. That's a, that's a joke, right? When the captain didn't respond, Carol's entire neck went pure black. You, you have reinforcements, right? The captain's eyes crinkled again. Nope. Just like old times, right, Happy? Will you stop repeating that? About 30 times what we used to do. Happy sounded deeply annoyed. Not impossible, of course, especially with Sleepy with us. Carol's eyes found Sleepy in the crowd of Cumin crew. He was masked and suited up like the rest, but Carol was pretty sure it was him. Something about the set of his shoulders. But as he watched, Sleepy's slightly slouched back straightened up into a military look and Kirill felt a sudden wave of fear. Not of the Tizix, but of this Cumin. He hadn't felt this even when the Cumin carpenter had been making trouble. Well, look at that. Sleepy serious. Well, I have to be, Captain. You brought the spaceman in hell, and it's my job to make it freeze right over. Sleepy's voice sent chills over Kirill's whole body. His heart pounded. Sleepy was... What kind of state was he in? Not anger, not fear, not determination exactly. Kirill was baffled. As the Cumin crew left the ship in a few oddly shaped shuttles that Bashful said were stealthed as well, Kirill remembered what Bashful had said in the medbay about Cumans and the state they got into. He said, not this time, not here, not today. Was that the thing Sleepy felt? Kirill wondered if there was a name for it. He forgot to watch, and missed the moment when radiant patches of fire bloomed over Tizik's control installations, shining blue against the soft white surface of Kazukan. Thank you for listening to episode 23 of Those Days with the Monsters, read by me, a good bean. I wish you the very best for the coming year.